Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm going to make my son's drawing into a toy. Quick note, this project is going to be about 3D modeling and 3D printing, and that's not something that everybody has experience with or access to. But don't click away. You may learn a little bit, and Fusion 360 is a free modeling software that anybody can use, and you can probably get access to a 3D printer at your local library or makerspace. My son draws all sorts of really awesome robots, and I always take pictures of his drawings. I took one of those off an Instagram account and pulled it into Fusion 360 as a canvas. This places the image on a plane and you can trace over top of it or create a new model using it as a reference. I traced over his drawing using line tools and curves and got pretty much the same shape really quickly and really easily. When you're creating a sketch, as long as it's a completely enclosed shape, you can extrude it into a 3D object. I did this on each one of the sections and made sure to create each one of these pieces as a new body, not joining them together. This gives you a lot more flexibility later on. His drawings are really simple, so there's not a lot of detail to add, but on the face, I did go back and trace in the shape of the eyes and the mouth on top of the body that I'd made for the head. I just made these with simple shapes and then used the press pull tool again to push these in from the surface just slightly. Then to give the whole thing some more dimension, I used the fillet tool on the horns to make them a little bit more rounded and the chamfer tool around a lot of the sections of the body to add a slight bevel. And since I was tracing a drawing, some of the shapes were a little wacky. And by that, I mean that some of these shapes were too small to accept the chamfer that I was trying to put on them. So I did have to go back to the sketch, and modify the shape just a little bit here and there to make it all work. And one thing that's really awesome about Fusion 360 is when you modify the sketch, the bodies that were created from it get modified automatically. I also used the chamfer tool to change the shape of the outside of the feet. There were a few places here that looked a little bit too blocky, and the chamfer tool is a great way to fix that. Next I started looking at how to attach the different parts of the body so that they could move independently. There were some weird overlaps and lines that weren't quite lined up, so I did make some changes before moving on to making the pegs. And for the pegs, I started with drawing a rectangle crossing two pieces that needed to connect. I used the revolve tool to spin that around into a cylinder and made sure that it set in the middle of both the leg and the foot. And once I had the cylinder in the right place, I used it as a tool to cut out its own shape from the foot. This creates a gap in the foot that will accept the cylinder. Then I attach the cylinder to the bottom of the leg, making those two pieces one body. This creates a positive post on the leg and a negative hole on the foot so that they can fit together. And then I did the same process for both of the horns, both of the legs, both of the arms, and the little key, making all of the pieces plug into the main body. I exported all those pieces as STL files and brought them into my slicing software where I scaled them up to the actual size that I wanted to print them at. Then it was time to send them to the printer. This video is sponsored by Audible, and you probably know who they are, but in case you don't, it's one of the biggest selections anywhere of audiobooks. There's tons of stuff there that you'll enjoy, both fiction and nonfiction, a bunch of stuff that'll help you actually be a better version of yourself. For me, I'm listening to Capital Gains by Chip Gaines, and I'm learning a whole lot about entrepreneurship. If you want to check out this book or any of the other ones, you can sign up for a free 30-day trial, and you get a free book to keep. Go to audible.com slash makestuff, or text makestuff to 500-500. That's audible.com slash make stuff or text make stuff to 500 500. Thanks, Audible. A couple of printing notes. I printed these high infill, so hopefully they should be tough and will survive some play. I also didn't modify the tolerances on the post and the holes that they go in. Instead, I decided to do that with sandpaper so that they were a nice tight fit. And given the orientation of these pieces and the holes in them, there was a lot of support material built into the pieces that easily came out. Once I got all that stuff pulled out, I started to be able to snap the thing together and it had a nice tight fit and held position really well. The joints that were a little too tight just took a little bit of extra sanding to make them move freely. Of course, you could stop right there and just have a cool 3D printed toy, but I wanted it to look less like a 3D printed object, so I started by covering the whole thing with some filler primer. This is a really thick primer that I spray on all my 3D printed pieces, and it fills up some of the space in between the print lines. It's easily sandable to a nice finish, and you can do multiple coats if you need to build up the surface. After I had this all sanded and used a tack cloth to get rid of the dust, I started by spraying certain pieces orange. Then I moved on and did some other pieces white. 
you'll notice that I didn't mask off the posts, and that's mainly because I can't mask off the holes very well, so I decided to paint everything and then just scrape off the paint to make sure that everything was still a nice tight fit. After it all dried, I started putting the pieces together and scraped off the paint from the post where it needed it. It actually worked pretty well, just pushing these pieces together scraped off a lot of the paint and made for a nice tight fit. And of course, some of them were a little too tight and I did have to take an X-Acto knife to scrape it off. You could certainly mask these off and not have to deal with this at all. But I figured overall, I would rather have them tight than loose. I debated painting a lot of details on this and trying to make it really fun looking, but ultimately I decided to make it look as much like the picture as I possibly could, so I just used a Sharpie to darken in the eyes. Alright, your drawings are awesome, and I take pictures of all of them. Do you remember this one? Oh yeah! Check this out. What do you think? Good. So I took your drawing, and I remember how we 3D modeled? Yeah. I 3D modeled your drawing, and this is all 3D printed. Wow. You can turn parts of him. He's kind of hard to turn, but you can bend. It's awesome. <laughs> Obviously, my son was pretty happy with it. That makes me pretty happy with it. You could take this as far as you want. You could add all sorts of articulation and detail and painting. But, you know, it's a toy, so it's probably going to get destroyed. I did learn something that I think is pretty important when putting this together. Some of the posts that I made for especially these arms were really small and are going to be prone to breaking. So if you do this, make sure that the posts connecting your pieces are as big as they can possibly be just to make them stronger. I hope you like this one. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments. I've got a whole lot of different types of projects that you may be interested in, so check some of those out and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. And you can probably find a 3D printer locally at a look. 3D printing, but a not a. Okay. Bye.